Hi boys! Welcome back to the channel, YouTube. I'm Navy Dad. This is Rusted Bolts Garage, and yes, one more Miata video before we get on to the Chevelle and back to the old blue. getting ready to sell the Miata on and there's one thing I wanted to finish uh, before I sell it on and, and uh, do a video on it because I've done a couple of them it's really kind of cool. If you all have a Miata, an NA especially, I think it's available for an MB now too, uh, and you've seen a KG Works a gauge cluster surround. They are beautiful. It, it is a work of art. They're really cool. Gives the car a real cool 50s, 60s, classic British sports car look and I really like it. Uh, it comes out of um, uh, Japan and they're really expensive. Um, anywhere from 300 to, to 500 bucks, I think even over 500 bucks. Also there is uh, Garage Star, I think they, they now offer one too, uh, but it's in the UK so you're still paying international shipping and it's still going to be I think US dollars somewhere around $350, something like that. So. How about coming up with a way to give your car a little bit of that look for under 100 bucks? There is a way that you can do this without spending a whole bunch of money. You now, here is your stock NA6 and NA8 gauge, of course. The NA6 having a real oil pressure sender and gauge. And then, here's what one looks like after your... Dang it. Ah. Let's see if we can get there. Can you see? I'll, I'll put a better picture in here. And of course, this does have rev limiter gauges in here. In fact, I actually have an idea for an enterprising person. Obviously, Adam would be the person to, uh, to do this. In fact, um, if you know Adam, send him this. I don't know him, but I bought his products. <laughs> send a link to this and go down and look at, and I haven't edited this yet, obviously, so I will put the timestamp right here for an idea that I had that, obviously, I don't have time and patience to do that, but I think it would be really cool, basically, it's an insert to create the semblance of a KG Works dash, and it would be very easy to do and inexpensive to R&D and inexpensive to make. You could do it with a water jet. You could do it with 3D printing. There's all kinds of cool ways you could do it. I offer it for sale to people that want to do this without spending 500 bucks for one of those dang dashes. So anyway, let's get to work and I'll show you how I did mine. Okay, so here is a picture of the first one that I made a couple of years ago. And I actually um, used a combination of these. I'll put links on the Google Docs on what size these are and, and where you can get these. These are, um, it's actually a two-piece one. They're very, very jeweled, if you can see that. Pretty cool, aren't they? And this actually comes apart, which is what you're going to need if you plan on keeping the plastic glass cover because this is so short on the bottom, you can't use... Um, this completely screwed together or it actually hits the plastic. So again, this was the first one that I did. I found another alternative that's a little bit better. Plus that, these are expensive right now and really hard to find because of COVID obviously. But I will give you the measurements, but on the... So what I actually did is I, I put these, again, here, here's the picture of the first one I did. And I did use these, but on this bottom section here, I found these, I think these are eight millimeter. I don't know. I'll, I'll put the, these in the description uh, on that Google Doc. This is unscrews like this, as does this top piece like that. So we now have two pieces. And you go like that. And then I've lost the hardware <laughs> along the way somewhere. But basically, what you do is you take, you see that? I hope you can. Uh, you're going to actually take the hardware that was mounting hardware from this and you're going to lock it down on top of this. Then you take the hardware that came from this piece and then that's what you actually bolt down inside. Then 
the um, the faceplate fact. Here's one disassembled. Again, that's not what we're doing here today. I've got an easier option. But if you can see that, I know lighting's terrible in here. Maybe, how about this? All right, can you all see that? Yeah, there we go. So that, that's how it fits in there. And that is plenty of room for the plastic glass to cover. <laughs> Try, trying to do this as inexpensively as possible. And this is not what we're doing today. So I just wanted to kind of show you your options that you have. But these are really cool, yes, but they're hard to find right now. So what we are going to do is something a lot less expensive and easier to find. And that is, these were 12 millimeters and they are going to fit in here perfectly. <clears throat> and before I take that dash cluster apart, I'll show you. So this is how they come apart. And you just unscrew the bottom. Again, the link to these parts is in the Google Docs that you can click on below. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you're going to go ahead and remove the front cluster um, off of the rest of the gauge, which is really, really easy. There are little tabs right here. You see that? <laughs> I'm sorry about the light, I really am. Uh, and you just take a screwdriver and push them down. Actually, it's better to start on the bottom one. Kind of give it a little pressure when you pop the first one so it doesn't snap back in just like that one did. Okay, and there you go. All right, now the hard part. As you're going to do, you are going to have to do this. <laughs> this is, um, I think it's actually heat glued and, and heat soldered around here is what they actually did. So what you're going to do is you're going to gently break this off. And, and it's going to crack a little bit, but it shouldn't crack on the part that's visual. It will crack underneath there a little bit. Then you're going to need to clean it up. But what you want to do when you put it back together is you want to use some black RTV. If you use clear, it's going to show the imperfections around here. Um, from you removing it, but if you use black, it, it won't. So that's definitely what you want to do. So gently start prying this thing up. we go. Alright. So you can see kind of around here you see where that the, the glue was. There's actually more glue on the bottom than there is on the top. What you want to do is if you have a Dremel come up and clean that out just a little bit and then you can kind of clean the back side off of this a little bit and then again you're going to want to use black RTV when you reseal this. And while you have it off take, take the uh, Take the time to, to polish it and you see I did do a little tiny crack right there but that's not going to show because of the bezel. So um, you know take it clean it up really well use some plastic polish to make it make it look new again. Alright next up is that little guy. Now you can do a couple things. One you can either take this off completely Back here, this it's just um, it's heat glued on, and you can gingerly snap it out, just, or you can go ahead and drill your holes with it sitting in here. But you can craft this really easy, so you want to be very, very careful. In fact, you're going to have to be so freaking careful. And then also, you're going to need to um, take out the turn signal uh, little arrow thingies here, right here and here, the green stuff. And again, that, these are really easy because you don't have to worry about if you break them. Just snap them off. It's kind of like basically it's a plastic rivet that is molded into the back of this thing and then they put the little piece of plastic on and hit it with a little bit of heat and that that rivets it on. Alright so next up we're going to want to drill a hole here here and cut these out but what I recommend doing is actually cutting these holes the four holes in here um, before 
you cut those pieces out so that you have a little bit of firmness there. And you're gonna be want, want to be so freaking gentle doing this. All right, all right, so next step is drilling your holes. And then you're gonna take actually the nuts. I mean, this is the way I'm doing it, and I've done it several times, I've made several of these. You can take this piece off, you can measure it perfectly and be exactly precise if you want to, but there's enough wiggle room with uh, this edge right here that if you get it off a little bit, you can you can still maneuver it around. So what I'm <laughs> again, I pretty good guesstimator. <laughs> um, so take the nuts and kind of put them at the edge of this part right here, okay? And you don't want to get them overlapped because you do have to tighten these down. That's how you lock them in. And what I do is I take a uh, exacto knife, all right, and then I'm going to find the center. Yeah, that's it. Find the center of it, and just do a little bit of this. Because this is what you want to get started for when you drill. You now it's a little unorthodox. Oh my gosh. Everybody's going to be kind of going, what the hell? Well, good thing is, is these clusters are pretty cheap <laughs> and easy to find. But I will tell you something else. There is something here for an enterprising person. In fact, I was going to do it, uh, but just don't have the time. And I'll show you that in here in just a few minutes. Now the nerve-wracking part. <sighs> All right, what I suggest is use a step bit. You want one that's got a pretty pretty sharp um, starting point. But again, when you get close to the hole, you can do adjustments. Anyway, here's my quick, quick idea. Maybe Adam could come up with this. This piece back here, this plastic piece that comes comes out, an enterprising person could scan this, put it in AutoCAD, and have it water jet cutted, a piece of aluminum, or actually do a 3D printer, and you could match this line in here, glue this in here, have the holes already there, and you have yourself an instant KG Works style dash. All you have to do is drill those two holes, and you're good to go. Now, again, that would be an enterprising person. I don't have time or the patience for that. But if you do it, you take my idea, Give me some credit for it because I don't think anybody's ever done it before, but it would be pretty cool and you could, you know, sell it on your eBay store for $29.95 or something like that. The unnerving part. And once you get really close, you take your exacto. I clean it up a little bit. Okay, so we've got everything drilled out. And well, I don't have them all out here, but you can see they drop right in. Now, you do have some wiggle room, so in case you get it off a little bit, you can adjust a little bit. And I did crack it. <laughs> Battery died on the last one, so I missed that, but you see a tiny crack right there and right here. You can kind of see it better back here. I went too fast. So uh, I did exactly what I told y'all not to do. <laughs> anyway, so the next thing is you want to drill the holes uh, to wallow out the turn signals. You know, or you can leave them if you don't, you know, won't want to do that. But I don't know. I think that looks cool. So let's do that real quick. And this is, again, you need to be really careful with this, right? And be really careful when you punch through like that. Reverse it and there you go. And don't try and go through from the top. You're just going to scratch up the inside of that bezel. Okay. Now see how your turn signal is going to look in there? Pretty snazzy, huh? Kind of cool. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. Now, a couple other things to have to just do it this way. You can come back and you can paint this if you want. Uh, because we are going to be taking this out and we're going to paint it.
both top and bottom. You don't want to paint just the bottom because it's going to show all the scratches and everything through. So you want to paint both sides. Plus that, you're going to um, you're going to cut these pieces out. Back. So what you want to do, take your X-Acto knife and kind of scribe where you're going to cut it with um, with your Dremel. So okay, so we've got that done. Let's go ahead and take that off. You're gonna, again, you need to be really, really careful, especially if you have already um, cracked this like I did. So you've got you've got um, you've got three points here where it is it is glued down. So it's basically a hot rivet. Uh, these rivets are part of the back of this. Drops down in here, and they take a heat gun and pop it. Pop. See how that popped off right there? It's like a little tiny. It's like a little plastic rivet, basically, um, but it's melted. It's really gentle. And of course this one here, boom, there you go, now it's off. All right, so, let's see, well, shit. I didn't want to do that, and I did, but I think we're still okay, because See, don't do as I did. Once you put this back in place, yeah, the ring is actually going to cover up the part that I just screwed up. So, <laughs> yay me. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go get our Dremel and just cut that out. I'm not going to show you that because it's outside in the garage and it's cold as frick. So, um, I'm just gonna go do that right now. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of made a mess of this, but it's okay, it's not gonna show. Now what I did is I, I just hit it with some uh, red Scotch-Brite and then uh, some Duplicolor uh, flat black, and you're all set. So first I'm gonna go ahead and do the turn signals and the uh, high beam light. Okay, so all right, taking this one off. But pull these off, you're going to find, because these are supposedly for marine use also, so they're kind of, they got a waterproof um, O-ring on them, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't look waterproof to me. But you want to take that off, because you're not going to use it on the flange side here. You're going to use it on the bolt side, because that basically turns it into a lock washer. Take the package out, and then all you do is unscrew the LED light because you do not need that. That is not going to be used. Okay, so we got everything taken apart, so drop that sucker in there. Do a little O-ring on it. And your nut. Believe it or not, <laughs> this nut <laughs> is 14 millimeter if you're using the 12 millimeter pilot lights. Okay, and then you know it just just gently tight. You don't have to make it real tight because again, that little O-ring is just gonna lock it in place. So you're you're good to go there. There you go. What you think? Kind of looking pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, something I should mention. You can, you know, customize your dash if you want to. You can either paint this, you can paint the whole thing. You could take this off and just paint this part if you wanted to give an aluminum look for it. Now, also, what I had done before, if you saw on the other dash, it actually had a carbon fiber overlay. I happen to have one of those here. That was an extra one. But it's really cool, and this company used to offer a whole bunch. A year ago or whatever, you had multiple different colors. You had red, you had aluminum, you had chrome, all kinds of cool things that would, uh, I think were made by the same company, but I think part of the problem is, is freaking COVID and it's just getting the stuff imported back from China because you know that's where that stuff comes from. <laughs> but keep an eye out because the stuff does, you know, pop up every once in a while. Or again, you can, you can paint it and do whatever you want to it. I'm going to keep this one black because it's going to after I add my rev limiter gauges to it, um, it's going to be a very classic sports car look to it. So, um, okay, now before we go ahead and, and 
put this on and glue this on. I want to show you something else. Right. The next thing you want to do is you want to come over and you want to take this thing off. And it just pops off. So, let's see, can you see that? Yeah. So that's all your your lighting. You know, you got brake, charge, check engine. I hope that's coming through. Belts, um, windshield washer fluid for cars that have ABS or UK cars, and of course ABS. So you've got all those different colors. So this is something that you want to decide on what colors you're going to put. So again, this is why you're not using the LED hookups because you don't have to. The lights from the factory will actually shine into there and they're very bright. All right, so as you remember, we've got our two little tabs right here. That's where you're going to want to put a little bit of glue. And of course, yeah, I know, <laughs> I cracked that, but it doesn't show, so it's okay. So get you a little bit of Gorilla Glue, I guess. You know, and you don't need a lot of glue if you're using it a little bit. Go, push that back in place. Okay. Not looking too bad except for the cracked piece, but like I said, it's not going to show. I'll show Okay, so I'm just going to use the um, the same setup as the factory did. Uh, okay, there you go. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. I got greasy fingerprints all over it, but pretty cool, huh? So we still got a little bit of work left to do, but I'm going to go have a beer, and I will be back later. Okay, so next up is our rev limiter gauges, and I'm not going to show you how to do this because Adam, with who owns rev limiter, his tutorials are are the ones you want to look at. They're excellent. So we'll just do a fast motion here, but we'll do the uh, unpacking here because this is really pretty cool. He sends all kinds of cool stuff, stickers, and he always sends a Hot Wheel, which is really cool. And of course, he personalizes it, so you know. You can't beat that. That's just cool. Okay, next up. Reseat it. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, depending on on which which pilot lights you decide to go with, Sometimes the nut can get in the way and you might have to shave a little bit of this off. And I already test fitted this and it fit perfectly. But the last one I did, of course, it was a little, little bit different nut. But um, So do keep that in mind. You might have to shave a little bit of this off. Alright, so what do you think? Pretty dang cool, huh? Next up, uh, I gotta go get some black RTV and we'll clean this up, make sure it's all dust free and put it back together. Okay, so I did polish up um, the glass which turned out pretty good, or the plastic glass, um, with this stuff here. This is a clear plastic polish and clear plastic polish cleaner by Meguiar's. Make sure this is all clean, you know, you don't, you don't want to get as much dust out of there and, crap as you can. I mean, it from the factory, it's not sealed. <laughs> so it gets stuff in there. Again, I think um, this lends it to a classic sports car look, um, you know, of the, of the late 50s and 60s and even to, to the early 70s, especially if uh, you're looking at um, British cars, because a lot of them, like MGs and stuff, they did have really big um, lights. So I kind of like that. I think the look works well. But let's go ahead now and take black RTV. And you want to use RTV. Don't use glue. Because if you ever need to take these off again, you can easily take it off. And you only want to use it in a few spots, like here, 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 and then a couple on the back. And put it on both sides. Put it on here, and then put it on just a little bit on the edge, and then plop it down. What do you think? Pretty freaking cool. A little bit better than uh, the old factory stock one, don't you think? 
Sorry, I can't show it to you in the car because, well, the car is in a million pieces and about to be sold. <laughs> so I get to work on the Chevelle, and I've got some new stuff coming for Old Blue, too. But anyway, this is something you can do for under 100 bucks yourself, less the gauge faces, of course, which are range from different prices on, um, on Adam's site. And I think these were 129 maybe. I can't remember exactly. I, bought I just think it just is such a classic um, sports car look. So I think it turned out pretty cool. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that one. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's just a, an inexpensive way to add a little more character to your car. You know, if you're, you're going to a car show or, or what have you, you know, even if you have a drift missile out there and you want somebody to look inside and go, hey, how, how, how'd you do that? That's cool. Where'd you get that? It's really easy to do. So I have one more Miata how-to, something kind of on the same lines of something that's easy to do, inexpensive to do, and really adds some coolness to your car. It's so inexpensive, it's like, it's like less than 30 bucks. So anyway, uh, be looking for that one. And now that um, the snow is gone, the sub-zero temperatures in Texas are gone, all that fun stuff that happened you know, a couple weeks ago, uh, back to work on the Chevelle and some cool stuff coming for Old Blue as well. So stay tuned. Boys, you be safe. I'm Navy Dad and there's no beer in that refrigerator because my son, when it got really cold, the refrigerator died. So he put the beer outside because, you know, it was cold and it froze and blew up all over the patio. So <laughs> haven't restocked since. So <sighs> crap. Unfortunately, there's there's some rosé in the refrigerator I might have to enjoy. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm out.